Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome again to this edition of the CBC Spotlight Series. Of course, my name is Jim Brockman. I am your host for our Spotlight Series, and we are really excited for you to join us today. Uh, we've got a very awesome presentation regarding our Fine and Performing Arts program. But before we get there, I want to talk a little bit about what we've got coming up. Keep in mind, every summer you can connect with us virtually every Tuesday morning at 10 a.m., we are offering our CBC Coffee and Conversation. We'll provide the coffee, you bring the conversation. We are here to answer your direct questions about CBC High School. Whatever you have, whatever you want to talk about, that's what we'll do. And of course, by joining us, we will send you a Starbucks gift card so you can enjoy some, uh, some coffee on CBC. Of course, every Thursday, I want to remind you that we offer our CBC Chick-fil-A and Chat. The CBC Chick-fil-A chat is a great way for your son to connect with CBC High School. This will be give him an opportunity to uh, meet students, to talk to staff members, and to just find out a little bit more about what CBC has to offer. That is every Thursday morning, uh, or excuse me, every Thursday afternoon. And of course, if you're here with us right now, uh, you know that every Wednesday we offer our CBC Spotlight Series, where we take a deeper dive on programs, opportunities, and experiences that we offer here at CBC. Of course, you've already seen our STEM program. You've uh, gotten to learn a little bit more about our honors program and our leadership program. Today, we're gonna highlight our Fine and Performing Arts program, and next week, we are gonna highlight our Faith Formation program here at CBC. And so we've got a great lineup, so stay tuned, stay with us all summer, and connect with us virtually to find out more information about CBC. All right, so without further ado, let's jump right in to our Fine and Performing Arts presentation. Uh, we've got two very special guests with us from our Fine and Performing Arts program, Miss Maggie Kasiolik and Mr. Charlie Miller. Maggie, Charlie, welcome to Spotlight Series. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thanks, Jim. Good morning. Morning. Maggie, uh, take it away. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us about your role here at CBC. All right, I am the department chair of the Fine and Performing Arts. I am one of three of the art teachers here, and I'm gonna be starting my 16th year here at CBC. Excellent, and Charlie, your role here at CBC, what do you do? I am the director of vocal music here at CBC. I'm going into my sixth year, and I work in the music program along with Dale Sharkey, our, our director of bands, and in the theater department along with Tom Murray and Ed Getz. So both of you guys, we have we have two very, uh, I, I think, different uh, uh, areas of our fine and performing arts represented. Uh, Maggie, you're more on the traditional arts side. Uh, Charlie, you're more on the performing arts side. Just in general, Maggie, talk about the goal, the reason um, of why would we have a fine and performing arts program at CBC? Yeah, I think the, the main goal is just to teach, you know, art appreciation and, you know, we use art as the means to um, kind of create some life skills in our students, um, skills that they'll use not only in our classes, but in college, in their English classes, in their history classes, and then later on in a career, hopefully. So creativity is obviously a huge uh, part of what we do. Um, but along with that, we are teaching communication skills, collaboration skills, and then critical thinking that um, a lot of these kids um, really kind of, it takes a, a little bit for them to like get comfortable with those skills. But when we start doing activities in our classes that they can kind of touch on these, um, these things, then you can see them kind of becoming really good learners and better learners. Um, all of our students come from very different backgrounds in grade school related to art. Um, so in our level one classes, what I think we do really well is we start with the basics. So if you're in a drawing class or a painting class or a digital media class, we're gonna start basically teaching from square one, act like that you don't know anything. But let's say you're a student that you had a really strong art background prior to coming to CBC, we give a lot of opportunity for you to kind of push your own limits and expand on skills that maybe you already know and really uh, expand that creativity and explore an area that is new to you um, in your own unique way. So I think we kind of like cater this 
you know, really special education that will kind of meet the student where they are and work with them. And the art classes are just kind of a space for them to really grow and have fun and experiment and, uh, you know, try new things. Yeah, I think that's really important, a very important concept too. I mean, one of the questions I get all the time is, uh, in order to take an art class in CBC, I've, I've got to be a big time artist, right? Like I've no. got to be, so yeah, right, exactly. And I think you nailed it on the head when you said like, no, we're, we're going to meet you where you are. Uh, most of our guys come in from experiences of uh, art was always an afterthought for them in their grade school, right? It's uh, it's the thing we do on Friday afternoon where we throw out some pencils or throw out some paper and we say, draw something and all right, we're done with that, put it away. It is a dedicated curriculum here at CBC. Maggie, talk on the traditional art side a little bit about the classes that you offer specifically traditional art-wise. Sure. Uh, so drawing one is a really great uh, beginner's class. Drawing is familiar to most people. If I say the word drawing, you kind of know what you're going to get with that. Um, and so that's a really popular class. And painting, again, along with that, that's just painting. We're learning watercolors, we're learning acrylic. Uh, we might touch in some oil painting as well with that. Um, we have our ceramics class. Ceramics is probably our most popular class, and that's only working with clay. So if you like to get your hands dirty, that's a really fun class for our guys to take. Um, and then we have our design class. Design class is a really great um, kind of beginning class if you kind of like all kinds of art or if you're kind of unsure, like, man, I don't really know what I like. It's almost like an appetizer platter of art classes in the type of uh, materials you use, this type of art you create. We're doing two dimensional stuff. We do some three dimensional stuff. So that's a really great uh, class for incoming freshmen. Um, but we have all of our classes are nine through 12th grade. So we have freshmen working with seniors, collaborating on stuff. It's really great. It's one of my favorite things to see. It's a lot of times these younger guys are teaching our older students how to do things. Um, and then one of our other traditional classes would be sculpture. So that's working all three dimensionally. Um, and again, a variety of materials. We build out of paper, cardboard, we do some clay, we use some metal, wood, all kinds of, you know, found objects, finding recycled materials. I had a kid make Starry Night out of Skittles in sculpture class last year. So all kinds of fun things uh, happening in, in all of those traditional art classes. Yeah, that's a, such a wide variety of, uh, of opportunities. And, and to know that I don't have to be great at doing it when I come in and they're gonna teach me basic skills. And I try, always try to tell guys, um, you don't have to be a great artist coming in. And we truly believe that with, with the right uh, teaching, the right training, the right technique, everybody can do some pretty good art. Now, again, it still takes you know creativity, it takes a keen eye and a steady hand. Those are all things that are really important, but but everybody can do art. And I think that's a really important concept for, for our guys to understand. Now, Charlie, let me bring you in from kind of a different angle here. Uh, director of vocal music, um, our, our vocal programs are outstanding, our theater programs outstanding, our band programs outstanding. So, so performing arts, what's the goal behind a performing arts program? So I would say our performing arts goal is actually fairly similar to the visual arts goal, um, but it's getting our students out in front of people and giving them the confidence and the agency um, to, to act, to sing, to play an instrument, to really express themselves in front of a crowd. I always like to say to my improv class, which is one of our theater classes we offer, that even if you're not going to go be a comedian or if you're not going to go do be part of an improv group at some point in your career or in college you will have to get up in front of a group of people and speak so it's honing those really just basic day-to-day -day communication skills but then also allowing them to utilize the creative side of their brain and really hone that passion for music that passion for theater they want to be an actor, they want to be a singer, or they just really love doing it and they want to do it on the side. And I think that's great because any kid who takes one of our performing arts classes will then have a greater appreciation for the performing arts throughout their lives. When they go to the when they go to the movies, they'll be able to appreciate the actors on screen. When they listen to a song on the radio, they'll be able to appreciate the music because they know how much work went into it. 
Yeah, I think that's a really important concept, especially um, you know, here at a school like CBC, who we get so many different types of students here. I mean, we're not looking for one specific type of student. We're not only looking for really outstanding academic kids. We're not only looking for kids who are athletic or who are into finding performing arts. And as you nailed it on the head, Charlie, when a few years ago, when when we had that group of football players who jumped in and did Greece, um, and it was like. I mean, between these outstanding professional, I mean, top of the line, some of the best actors in St. Louis in high school theater, um, alongside these like football guys who have never done this before. Uh, number one, you talk about just relationship building between groups that maybe otherwise wouldn't have crossed over. Uh, but I think you nailed it on the head when you say those guys walked away with an absolute appreciation for for what what a theater performer has to do or what a singer has to do. Um, and just uh, the rigor that it takes to to make that happen. You know, I, I think you, you guys also said something I think is really important is you talked about both of you in, in your own way talked about uh, collaboration, creativity and communication. And we see those as essential skills in our program. So I know we've got I, I, again, I didn't count. but I want to say, do we have something like 30 plus classes in the finding performing arts program that somebody can take me. It's crazy. It's the crazy. Number. I feel like we're always we're always adding new classes every year as things come up that kids are interested in. So yeah, the list right, just right. grows. Yeah, I mean so like Maggie, talk real quick, like digital media is digital media is relatively new for us last year or so. Yeah, we got we got a couple new classes coming up this year. Uh, digital media is going to focus on the Adobe Creative Suite. So one of the big programs that they learn there is Photoshop. Um, and also within that class, they'll, uh, there's talks of working with our TV production class. So not only are you learning to edit photos, we're going to learn to edit video. So that these are skills that these kids can use not only in their art classes, um, they could use these in their other classes for projects that they're working on. Um, and then another new class this year is um, photography, digital photography. We have a photo club and that has just really gotten really popular. So we saw the need for, hey, let's offer a class where kids can really learn the basics of photography um, in, the, in the digital way because we don't have um, a dark room or anything here. But um, these are just skills that again, like kids are like taking uh, photos on their, their phone, like everyone has a camera in their pocket basically these days. So kids are comfortable taking photos, but like, let's learn a real camera. Let's learn about shutter speed. Let's learn all kind of the ins and outs of photography in a, in a formal setting. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense for sure. And Charlie, um, you know, uh, the performing side of this is, is crazy packed with curriculum classes as well. So actual classes a kid can take. So talk a little bit from the performing arts side. Uh, what are some classes a student can take? Well, we have a huge variety of classes. Um, in terms of our music courses, uh, I am the director of vocal music. So I am the conductor for Brothers in Harmony, which is our vocal ensemble here at CBC. And it's a group of guys, they all love to sing, all coming from various levels of choir experience. Some just like to sing in their car, like to sing solos whenever they want to. And we create this awesome blended sound and they serve as our cantors at mass. They sing at our open house. They sing national anthems and things. Uh, they're a great group of guys. And then that leads into our band program which offers multiple different bands. So we have a drum line, we have our cadet band, which is more of a traditional band. And this year we're starting a modern band, which is very cool. Modern band is popping up everywhere around the country. It's the really new thing in music education. And what that is, it's using students who have taught themselves to play guitar, they play piano, they play drum set, they sing, but they wanna focus on creating almost like a modern day rock band or, or pop singing. And in that class, there will be separate little bands and they will all be performing more modern music and understanding how that connects to music theory and learning how that music fits together. And along with that, we also have an audio engineering class and that's for those guys who may not want to actually perform, but they want to be behind the scenes as a record producer, we're learning how to mix sound and audio, create beats, things like that. And that class has been a huge success. And then let's see, we also have rock history, 
which is, I will say, one of my favorite classes that I get to teach. <laughs> and that covers basically the past hundred years of modern music. So we talk about the history of blues into rock. Then we talk about soul and R&B into like 70s rock and folk music and singer songwriters and the beginnings of rap and how that merges into the music that we listen to today of all genres. So it's a really fun class, um, very interactive, very discussion-based, lots of listening to music, lots of dissecting performances. It's a ton of fun. It's offered every single semester. Anybody can take it. It's a blast. And then we also offer um, guitar and piano. And you do not have to have ever played the guitar or piano to take those classes. So they start from beginner level where if you've never touched a guitar or piano in your life, we can start you there and we will teach you how to play those instruments. But if you come in already knowing how to play guitar or piano, we also offer advanced levels of both of those. So you can continue on in your education of how to play those instruments. And then on the theater side, we offer classes in acting, in improv, which is a blast. So many students at CBC take improv and it really helps you get out of your shell. It helps you connect with classmates. Um, it's a ton of fun. Acting is of course, taking traditional scenes, scenes from movies, scenes from plays, doing monologues and getting comfortable with memorizing those lines and getting up and understanding a character. And then we also offer great backstage courses like Stagecraft where you learn how to design and build scenery, work with lighting design, work with sound design, all these very cool elements behind the scenes that go into all of our theater productions. Yeah, I think it's safe to say, I mean, both of you guys nailed it on the head when you talk about all the classes that we offer. Uh, it, it for sure is the most robust uh, program that we have on our campus. Um, probably one of the most popular programs and, and also I think one of the most successful programs. Uh, day in and day out, I give tours. And I can, can't tell you the number of people who um, will walk out of CBC saying like, wow, I never knew you had so many opportunities through the fine performing arts. And I'm just, I'm really excited that we get to do the spotlight series and really dig in on all the different ways people can connect through our fine performing arts for our, for our students. Now, let's take that a little bit separately because we have a, co we have a curricular side of this where the classes they can be a part of. And then we have a co-curricular side of this. So Maggie, talk a little bit about just some of the art clubs that you guys sponsor through more of the traditional art programs. Sure. So we have just a traditional art club. This is for any student that just likes art. Um, maybe they're in an art class during the semester and they want to continue on with that. Maybe they didn't get into the art class that they wanted. So we are, uh, our rooms are open during our activity period for students to come in and just create art. And that can be anything. Um, we've got kids that are doing drawing, kids that are painting, we got kids that are working with clay. Um, we also have opportunities that kids can kind of learn about careers in art during that time as well. Um, we also have a publicity club. So this kind of works with our student leadership council and they are creating the banners and the signs that are promoting all the fun events that are happening uh, on campus throughout the school year. So that's a really popular club. And then our newest club that we just started is National Art Honor Society. So we just received our charter last semester for this, uh, for this organization. And this is for, I have like seven really serious art students and we just thought we need something more than just art club, you know, like let's do um, something that is really going to help us build a portfolio or get involved in different art shows around the St. Louis area or even national level. And so these guys kind of took it upon themselves to figure out what it was going to take to get this club rolling. And it is it is up and, and going. So next year it will be our first full year of National Art Honor, Honor Society. And really the only requirements for that is that you've taken an art class at CBC and you've got an A in that class. Um, and that's really the, the main requirements to be a part of that. So we're really hoping to kind of get some more students involved in that. Um, because within that we've had, just last semester we had some uh, artists come in and kind of guest speakers to teach these guys some different uh, art mediums that we don't teach here in a class, just to give them other opportunities. We had some college representatives come from uh, Savannah College Art and Design just to give these kids kind of open their eyes to what careers in art are available and what maybe art in college could look like. Um, and so just to 
possibilities for that organization are just endless in what we can do and uh, kind of help these kids that are serious about art kind of find their path. Yeah, I think that's an important part too. I, I, you know, we talked on the one side of it, uh, guys who've never done serious art and we kind of introduced them to that. And it's great to hear that we've got this other side of guys who are serious art students um, and, and might want to pursue art as part of their careers long term. Uh, Maggie, I got to ask you real quick, be, it become really popular. I'm going to put you on the spot here. Uh, <laughs> talk about the pop-up art shows because yeah. those things have been incredible. Oh my, they're taking the world by storm here. They have. We we started the pop-up workshop maybe two years ago, and we just felt that there was a need that these kids are creating these awesome uh, projects in class. And yeah, their class sees them. Maybe my other students in my other classes will walk by something and see a project that a kid was working on. But I was like, we need to show more of this stuff, especially the sculpture and the ceramics things that kids make because it's three-dimensional. Um, that's a little bit harder to kind of put on display because we have a lot of frames around CBC that we can put some of the drawings and the paintings. But what we used is the, the lunch period. We kind of scheduled those sculpture classes to meet during lunch. And then during lunch, we'll just go down, we'll take our projects, we'll set them up on tables and we have different activities. Sometimes we have kids vote on their favorite. Um, sometimes you have teachers vote for their favorites. And what this does is just kind of gives the kids an opportunity to get feedback on what they made um, and show it off because some really awesome things are going on and these kids are creating and we just want as many people as possible to see what is happening. Yeah, I think that's one of the fun parts about it is when, uh, I'll speak for myself, when I get to vote and, and you've got seven or eight guys at a table just lobbying hardcore for their, what, and, they're, and they're telling me the, the finer points of why this looks like this and this is how this is really supposed to happen. And boy, they just lobby so hard. It's so exciting to see how excited they are. But I also got to imagine that as they're creating it, knowing that there's a possibility for a pop-up art yeah. show down the road, I, I got a feeling they just put a little more into it, right? Yeah, I think I think we've gotten way better results. Um, and because again, they don't want to put out a bad product, right? So I think they work right. harder, knowing that a lot of people are going to see this. And then I also, what I really love about it is it makes them think about why they're making something. You know, not just hey, I want to make something looks cool, but why did I make these decisions? Why did I make it this color? Why did I use this material? So I think that's really good for our reflection. Um, and it as we do the design process. Um, you know, yeah. coming up with the idea, doing the research on why they do something, kind of maybe watching YouTube videos on how to, to do a do, new technique. Mm -hmm. um, and then maybe when we have our critiques in class, going back and making revisions, mm -hmm. you know, because they know what the end result is going to be is, you know, putting it out on display for all their classmates to look at. <laughs> so it really helps right. with that design process that we no really doubt I mean, that you, you talk about that public exhibition and, and shifting gears Charlie for a second because that's what you guys do <laughs> I mean that's your uh, performing arts I mean it's all public exhibition we are in we are live we are performing talk about the co-curricular opportunities through through the performing arts program yeah in terms of so first I'm really going to talk about how the whole school gets to experience the performing arts because in those classes, which are our bands, our choirs, the band gets to play at football games. They play at basketball games. They play at graduation. The choir sings at mass. Um, the choir sings at open house. There's these other opportunities for everybody to get to experience what they're creating in those classes, sort of like those pop-up art shows where they're exhibiting their, their product. The music students are exhibiting their product as well. And then also one of the cool things that the music program does we do a yearly competition trip. So for example, this next year, we will be going to a festival Disney in Orlando to compete wow. and take part in a workshop uh, down at Disney World. And we did that about four years ago. We had a huge success. The kids loved it. Um, and every year we choose a different destination. We get to work with professionals. We get adjudicated by some really high level uh, music people. It's really incredible and a really cool bonding opportunity for those boys. And then in terms of other co-curriculars, we have our massive theater program. So every year we do four to five shows, which I don't know for sure, but I think that's probably more than most schools would choose to take on because it is a ton of work, but it's a blast. It gives 
kids an opportunity to participate in one show, in four shows, in five shows. So if they're playing football in the fall, they can do a spring show. So it really opens up the opportunities to the whole school to participate. And these are not just small little productions. These are massive productions that we put on. Um, our most recent spring production was The Music Man. And I'm very proud to say that we were uh, recognized by the St. Louis High School Musical Theater Awards for best overall production, along with Jack Dieters, who you see up on that screen over there, um, for best actor and Ava Baruti for our best actress in that show. It was a huge success. It featured a cast of about 60 uh, students from both CBC and area schools um, because girls come from all different schools to participate in our shows. And we also featured an ensemble of middle schoolers who also got to participate in the shows. And every few years we'll do a show where some area middle schoolers have an opportunity to get on that CBC stage and sort of share the spotlight. But then also along with acting in the shows, we have a massive backstage crew and they really create the magic that you see on stage. So they help build those sets. They run the light board. They run the microphones. They paint the sets. They build the sets. They are like so important to that program. And the crew can meet during activity period. You can go after school if you can't go during activity period. And then we practice after school every day for the plays. Um, and they always just turn out a huge success. Yeah, I think, you know, one of the things that I try to tell people all the time, um, our theater program is as close as you're going to get to a professional theater pr program on a high school campus. I mean, you nailed on the head, Charlie. Most schools will do two shows, hmm. maybe squeeze out three shows in a year. We are doing annually either four or five full scale theater productions. Um, you, I mean, you talk about the size, man. We got casts and crews of, of more than 60 kids involved in making a single show possible. Um, and, and literally speaking, we have three adults. Uh, we have yourself, we have Tom Murray, the legendary theater director on, on the directing side. And then we have Ed Getz, who before we came on, we were just kind of all talking about Ed Getz. Um, talk about the credentials between, well, I mean, talk about your credentials, but also talk about Tom and talk about Ed and why I would argue we have the best theater program in St. Louis. Yeah, it's an honor to work with Tom and Ed. I mean, they're both incredible. Uh, Tom actually directed me in a couple things when I was a high schooler. So I've known Tom for quite a long time and he's acted at every theater around the St. Louis area. He's been in movies, he's been in commercials. He has years and years of experience and just tons of productions that he's directed hundreds uh, that have all just been incredible. And then Ed is seriously a, an amazing set and light designer. Um, he creates magic on that stage with the things he designs and builds. And he's been, he designed in New York, he designed at multiple universities and he's here at CBC uh, sharing his skills with our students. And then I've done theater um, and vocal music my whole life. My master's is in choral conducting so I have that choral music education background, um, but I'm also um, a freelance music director outside of CBC, and I am the music director of the Muni Teens. Uh, and actually Jack, who won that award for Music Man, one of our CBC students is a Muni Teen. Uh, so I get to work with him in the summers as well on that stage. Yeah, I mean, Charlie, you, uh, you, you obviously put yourself in some incredible categories there with when you've got a Tom Murray, who's I think directed 138 show oh yeah. over his 40 years here at CBC. Guys, that's rarefied air for a high school theater director. Yeah. Um, and then you've got you've got Ed Getz, truly a, a backstage person. We were joking before. Uh, so Ed Ed's been at CBC for a really long time. Ed's been but but before CBC, I mentioned he worked in New York off Broadway. He's been in, on college campuses, working at the University of Illinois. I mean, just doing some incredible stuff. And now he's here at CBC. Uh, you know, almost kind of seems like, well, you're off New York and now you're at CBC. Um, uh, so, but, but Ed, we tried to name an award after Ed. And uh, <laughs> Ed is truly a backstage guy. He refused to have the award named after him because he, he says it's the kids. He's like, it's not me, it's the kids. Um, and then yourself, Charlie, I mean, uh, amongst these two like juggernauts of, of Ed and, and Tom, uh, you've got, you have worked with, with uh, Muni Teens. I mean, that, that is, 
just an incredible lineup of, of talent in our theater program. Um, and the, the results show. I mean, Music Man uh, was the best show I've ever seen. Uh, some of the most talented, uh, one of the most talented casts we've had. Um, I, Charlie, I'm going to put you on the spot real quick here. Um, talk about a success story. Talk about in your time here at CBC, what's the most memorable show that you've done or been a part of or most memorable acting performance that you've seen? I'm putting you on the spot. You got to answer. No, it's fine. It's, it's really tough because <laughs> every year I'm always surprised by something. And one thing I'm always surprised by is when they're doing a play and not a musical because we majority of the shows we do are musicals, but we always do at least one to two straight plays a year. So I'm not nearly as involved in those, but when I go to see those, I'm always amazed at the acting ability of these students. Um, a couple of years ago, we did A Few Good Men, which is a really hard, heavy play for high school to put on. And I mean, these kids who'd never acted in a play other than maybe a musical or two, were just delivering this Aaron Sorkin dialogue in just such a riveting way. I was just amazed. It was incredible. Yep. And then this past year we did um, Amadeus, which is a school that's really hard for a high school to put on, but they pulled it off amazingly well. And even last year when we did, uh, I guess two years ago when we did Rock of Ages, so all of these hard eighties like hair metal songs that they had to sing. And these kids are coming out of the woodwork, just belting their faces off and that's <laughs> blowing me away. Yeah, I think, you know, I mean, you you nailed it. I mean, A Few Good Men, Amadeus, Rock of Ages, Music Man, uh, Grease, High Grease. School yeah, yeah, Grease was outstanding. I loved Grease. Uh, High School Musical, Macbeth, um, Spam a lot. I mean, these these shows are are incredible. I mean, these are headliner shows that you see. And to watch high school kids perform and produce these high-level shows is, is just incredible. Um, I, I tell I, – I, Tell anybody who listen, um, we, you know, people know us for our athletic program and we're really proud of our athletic program. What we do in our theater program is as good or better than what goes on on, a, on our, you know, uh, in our athletic program. Our guys just don't get the same press. The theater guys don't get the same press because Channel 5 isn't going to show up on a Friday night to record Amadeus, right? They're going to show up to our football games, you know. Uh, they've never seen us do Grease. Yeah. But they've seen play basketball, and that's what people see. So, you know, uh, Maggie, I'm going to pin you down real quick on a uh, give me a uh, give me a success story that surprised you, excited you from your time in the tradition. I mean, you've been here seventeen. This is going on seventeen years. No, 16. 16. 16 years. Sixteen years. Give me a success story that you've experienced, like one kid that just really surprised you. Oh, I don't know if I can just name one kid. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think one thing that we have done the last few years that I think is really exciting to see and the kids kind of surprise themselves is our level two art students. Uh, kind of their culminating activity for the end of the semester is our uh, fine and performing arts exhibition night. And so these kids have to showcase all the work that they've produced all semester. Um, and they invite their family and friends, a lot of the faculty and other students are a part of this night. And they're just kind of showcasing all the stuff that they've created throughout the semester. Um, they kind of put on, they hang it in the, down our black, we turn our black box theater into a gallery. These kids are hanging the work. They are writing artist statements about all their work they created. Um, and, you know, they really work, you know, basically four months straight producing high quality stuff that, uh, you know, has a lot of personal meaning to them because they kind of decide what they create, how they create it, what materials they use. And so just the, the stuff that comes out of that, um, you know, just this past semester, Drew Barclay, um, you know, he was in our drawing two class right there. I think you see a picture of him right now. Yeah. Um, you know, he liked art. He was really good at drawing, um, you know, but I think the work that he created, because he pushed himself um, in the, the meaning behind it, the one piece there with the the tractor, you know, had to do with his grandpa that had passed away, you know, and he invited his grandma and his parents to come to the show and they, you know, they were moved. They were so touched and, you know, in tears basically as they were reading about this work that Drew had created and why he created it. So 
just things like that, seeing these kids that put so much passion into what they create, and then they kind of surprise themselves along the way with the final outcome. It's really neat to see them get to showcase that and have other people kind of share in that excitement as well at our exhibition night. Yeah, Drew's a great story too because I mean I knew Drew coming in and um, you know as a as an eighth grader um, and, and I can't I can't remember every conversation Drew and I would have ever had, but I can almost be positive that Drew would not have described himself as an artist to me. No. Uh, he would have described himself as a soccer player. He would have described himself as a golfer. Um, he would not have described himself as an artist. And so one of the things that I always talk to guys about when they come to CBC and when, when we take tours and those sorts of things is I say, hey, listen, early in the tour, you described yourself as a whatever that might be. And I always say, it, Charlie, when we're on the stage in the theater, because you see him kind of looking left and right, like, wow. I, I always say to him, don't only be that. Don't only be the golfer. Don't only be the soccer player or the really good math kid, right? You come here describing yourself one way and leave so much more. I mean, Drew would describe himself as a kid who likes soccer, who likes golf, and now who know and can do really great art, you know? And so that's the power of, I think, the program that you guys have put together. And it's something that I think excites me most about the program. So how do we get a hold of you guys? Like Maggie, like I got questions about it. My, arts, my son's a really serious art student. Um, Charlie, my son is really into theater. Um, he's a muni kid. He wants to be part of it. How do we get a hold of you guys, Maggie? Yeah, I'd say, you know, first, shoot me an email. I think you see my uh, email address scrolling across the bottom here. Send me an email. We would love to have you come up to campus. You know, right now you can see one little corner of the art room, but we have two amazing art studios that we would love for you to come and uh, tour and look at. And, you know, we have a lot of student art hanging around the building. So come and check that out. See some of the amazing things that our students have made. Yeah. And Charlie, I know you mentioned earlier, every couple of years we might do a show that, that requires middle school kids. If a middle school kid is interested in, in maybe trying to get on our stage before he's a student here at CBC, where would we find that information? Or if they just want to see a show or they want to come to a concert? Yeah, on our CBC website, uh, under the Fine Arts Theater tab, there's all that's where we post all of our audition notices for all shows and exactly what we're looking for for each show along with our entire theater schedule for the entire year for when you can come see shows and also if you have any questions about theater about any of our music programs um contact me uh the email's scrolling below and i can answer the question or i can direct it to mr sharkey our incredible band director or mr murray or mr getz in the theater department but also we would love for you to come to campus. We can show you the band room. We can show you all of the amazing equipment we have in there. Um, we can show you all the awards we've gotten. We can show you with the theater, the black box theater, our smaller space that we perform in, um, our stagecraft shop, our backstage scene shop. And we would love to talk to you and give you more information. Yeah, I mean, it, as we're as we're wrapping this up, uh, I, I can't believe we didn't even talk about our TV video production program. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean that we we spend so much time talking about the theater and the band and and what we do in traditional art program, and we've got a fully functioning TV studio on campus every day. We do a news broadcast. Charlie, give me thirty seconds on the TV program. Yeah, our video production program, which is run by the amazing Randy Gardner. I mean, the stuff he puts out is just incredible. Um, it takes kids and they write the news broadcast, they create the graphics for it, um, they do the weather, they do daily uh, news updates around the school. It's fully student produced. Um, they are vital to what the entire school sees every morning to get their day started. But then also all the video production kids, all the KCBC kids they are out filming footage of every game they're filming footage they're putting together highlight reels they're filming our theater shows they're filming our band and choir concerts they are everywhere they are taking part in creating content for the entire school to put out to the public and to the school it's really incredible what they create yeah, I, uh, I'll own that one <laughs> for uh, not bringing that up earlier. Uh, but yeah, I mean, every you know live event, we stream live online through our CSN program. So there's a curricular element of TV video production as a class. Then there's this like after school activity period thing that can be a part of. I mean, 
it's incredible. I mean, I know we could go on forever. Uh, we're running out of time. Uh, Charlie, Maggie, thank you so much for joining us again on this Spotlight Series. It's been awesome connecting with you guys and, and get to know more about the program. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And of course, thank you all for joining us uh, today for this Finer Performing Arts CBC Spotlight Series. Uh, of course, we've got more coming up throughout the summer. Uh, we still have Faith Formation. We still have our academic program that we're going to highlight. I'm really excited about that. CBC is doing some outstanding things with the academic program that I don't think you're going to see in a lot of other schools. So we're really excited a lot to highlight that. Um, and then later in the year, I mean, I think these have been so popular thus far. I think we will keep these going. I, I've got a feeling that uh, we're going to dig in deeper on things like uh, tuition, financial aid, scholarship information. We're going to deeper dig in deeper about selecting a school and ways in which you can do that and things you should be looking for in order to be an informed consumer as you evaluate all these great options that, that we have here uh, in St. Louis. And so we're really excited about the Spotlight Series. Thank you for the response that you've given us. I mean, we've got hundreds of views now on our uh, on our previous videos. Um, remember, these are archived, so if you need to go back and watch, if you want to share, if you want to send, please do that. Uh, catch up with us on Facebook. You can catch up with us on Instagram, on social media, um, but share that out and let people know all the good stuff we're doing here. Uh, again, for Ryan Batliner, who's in the production studio. Ryan, you've been doing a great job answering questions. Thanks for answering questions along the way, providing content. Uh, pictures, all those sorts of things. And of course, Melissa Ryan, who's on our admissions team as well. My name is Jim Brockman. It's been great connecting with you today. Uh, take care and we hope to see you next time.